Ooh, a little bit of the bubbly. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to How to Train Your Caffeine. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to be going through my worst books of 2022. I did just do my best books of 2022, so if you think I'm just being a negative Nancy, well do check out that video as well. I'm a lot more upbeat and positive. Prefacing this by saying if you're an author, please click out. This is not for you, this is just for reviewers who just want to know what I dislike this year. And who knows, maybe you will find some recommendations from this video. Just because I didn't like it doesn't mean you won't. Plus I apologise as well if I talk about your favourite book in this video. I promise I'm not trying to upset you. I just didn't vibe. I didn't vibe with it. I will give you all my reasons why I didn't like any of these books that are in this video. Also, I don't own any of these books anymore, apart from one. A few of them I did get from the library, so they have been returned. So I won't be holding any of them up in this video, apart from one. So Ellen and Gav has a job on his hands. <laughs> So let's start off with the DNFs then. There were only a few that I thought were too bad I couldn't finish them. And I haven't rated them. I haven't rated them on Goodreads or anything like that. But the first one I want to talk about, which might be a bit of a surprise because I've seen it in a few people's best videos. And that is The Appeal by Janice Hallett. Oh my God, I was so bored. I couldn't finish it. I got to around about 70%. So I do think I read quite a chunk of it. And just like nothing was happening. Everything was told in emails, which isn't exactly the format that I loved. I was just thinking like, why in this day and age, why would you email so constantly? Like a lot of it just didn't make sense to me. From what I remember, it was about a sort of like fundraiser for someone and somebody ends up dying and yeah, everyone's just like talking via email, essentially. Like that is just all I can remember from it. It just felt so unbelievable to me. I was bored out of my mind. Nothing more to say about it. I DNF'd it. The next book that I DNF'd was Hide by Kirsten White. I couldn't get past, I think, 10%. The dialogue of it felt way too young for me, but I just felt like the dialogue didn't fit with the overall tone of the book. It felt very young. So it was clashing with what the author was trying to do with the plot. So I didn't get far enough for me to really get a sense of the plot itself, but it was supposed to involve people going to this amusement park and playing a game in order to win a lot of money, but it does take a dark turn. I'm sure the plot did get better, maybe the dialogue did, but I just found the dialogue was just far too cringy for me to continue on. And I wasn't gonna waste my time with that, no sir. One that I wasn't gonna mention, but I might as well, but I did DNF Fifty Shades of Grey by A.L. James. I was gonna read it because I accidentally booked one of the lowest rated hotels in London when I went down there back in May, and I thought, oh, let's make a vlog out of it, let's read the lowest rated book on my TBR in the lowest rated hotel in London. And I started filming that vlog while I was there and I got part ways through Fifty Shades of Grey and I was like, this is rubbish. This is like absolutely rubbish. Not just the book, but the vlog itself. I was like, I can't post this. So I decided to scrap the vlog. I decided to DNF the book and I've been better for it. I don't think Fifty Shades of Grey needs any kind of introduction in all honesty. To be fair, the movies are a little bit of a guilty pleasure for me. I did go and see every single one in the cinema, but I never read the book. So I was like, who knows, maybe I might like it. But turns out I did not. I just, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it to myself. <laughs> So getting into the books then that I did actually finish and I feel like I can give a genuine review and an honest rating on it because I read it cover to cover so I got the full picture. The first one I want to mention is Legally Blonde by Amanda Brown. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Legally Blonde is one of my favourite movies, right? I love it so much. It's so fun. The musical as well, absolutely adore the musical. The book, Legally Blonde, was illegally boring. It drained all of the fun and the colour from the movie and the musical and made it so incredibly grey. And it got to a point where I was like, is this even Legally Blonde anymore? I feel like we all know from the film that Elle Woods is a really driven character and she's so misjudged and she has this really big character arc where she really puts herself into learning at law school and really coming out the other side a total winner. And she's looked at as an underdog character who goes the full mile. In the book, she's not as driven. She feels like it almost feels like she doesn't really care that much and it got way too clinical for me as well. The book itself is based on Amanda Brown's experiences at Stanford University, but I feel like it got to a point where it got way too technical and for that reason, it really did take away all of that fun and energy that we get from the adaptations. There were a lot of things that the movie changed that were way better as well. There's no Emmett in the book either, so Elle doesn't really have this side storyline of a romance blossoming and you could really feel the hole that that left because it made Elle 
well, almost like she wasn't the same character. She didn't really get the development that the adaptations gave her, and it's definitely a huge case of where the movie is better than the book. 100%. Reese Witherspoon, in that role, brought it to life. Elle Woods is lifeless in the book. I'm so glad I read it so I could get that off my chest because I always wanted to read it ever since I found out that Lily Blom was based on a book. But now, I'm telling you guys, you don't have to read it. You really don't. Avoid. Okay, next is One by One by Ruth Ware. Now, I think in my original blog series where I read Booktube's Most Hated Thrillers, I said, I don't hate this book, I'm just bored by it. I mean, that's technically still true. I was bored to tears of it, and I don't exactly hate it with a passion, but I did want to mention it because this was my first Ruth Ware book, and oh boy did it disappoint. And I know that's on me, because I started with the one that a lot of people don't really like. Or at least there are people who do like it, of course. But like, I feel like it was one of those ones that I think is kind of universally accepted as not the best Ruth Ware book. And I did try and correct my wrongs in the giving for Thriller Authors a Second Chance vlog, and Ruth Ware still didn't quite deliver like I wanted her to. But one by one, I'm telling you, Ruth Ware got an email from her agent and she said, Give me 90,000 words of absolutely fucking nothing, and I want this one draft in one night. And that's exactly what Ruth Ware did. She gave her one draft in one night where absolutely nothing happened. The premise was so good. I love the idea of a ski resort and it being isolating and people dying, but my gosh, how can you take that great premise and make it incredibly boring? Ask Ruth Ware. I mean, I'm almost in awe of how she did that. And it got to a point where it just didn't feel like a thriller or a mystery anymore. I didn't feel that interaction I usually do get from thrillers and mysteries, where I'm even trying to work out who is the culprit. But Ruth Ware gave us nothing. She gave us absolutely bloody nothing. Every single chapter started with like a Snoop ID thing, and it was just copy and paste at the start of every single chapter. There was one change the entire time, and I got so fed up, honestly. It's one of those things where I turned the chapter, and it felt like, you know when music skips? and it goes back to the start. That's what it felt like every single time I started a chapter. It felt like I was making progress and going back two steps. And the dialogue, I mentioned this in my vlog, but it felt like copyright-free dialogue. It just felt like she copied and pasted it, maybe from an AI source, and pasted it into her manuscript. It just felt so bland. So, so bland. So I really didn't like it. The more I think about it, the more I do actually end up hating it. But the worst book that I read in the Reading Book Troops Most Hated Thrillers vlog series was Nine Lives by Peter Swanson. Holy shit. I had to go back and watch what I said about that because I felt this huge burning hatred for it that it blinded me in my opinion on it. And I was like, wait, what did I think of that again? Because I had tried to forget. My brain was like, please scrub me with bleach. I don't want to remember this book ever again. So unfortunately I did have to rewatch that little segment of my series in order for me to get triggered. Nine Knives was essentially an Agatha Christie ripoff. It really was. And I couldn't stand any of the characters, not a single one. I was hoping that in a thriller or a mystery, I would root for at least one person. But when you have ugh, the most awfulest of characters where they don't get any kind of true development, I felt absolutely nothing for them. And even like, in the original source material, and then they were none, I didn't care about any of them, but I was excited to see how they were gonna get offed off, and the suspense was there. There was no suspense in this. I didn't care about a single character. It was all over the place. There was no originality to it whatsoever, even down to the twist, and it just pissed me off so, so much. The whole motivation behind everything, the way that it unfolded, honestly drives me up the wall. I don't know why, but it felt like Peter Swanson targeted me when he wrote that book. He was like, how can I piss off How to Train Your, Ga how to train your Gavin to get pissed off? And it's weird as well because one of Peter Swanson's other books that I read this year made my best books of 2022 video. So I'm just so conflicted with this man because I feel like he can write sometimes, but I feel like he has an over-reliance on ripping off other books and things. There are a couple of books that he has wrote that I will never touch just because it will spoil other classic mysteries and thrillers. So I'm like, does this man have an original thought? Does he? Or does he have to rely on the source material of other people? Because even the one that made my best books relied on something else. Unfortunately, I hadn't read or seen the original source material for it, so I didn't mind as much. But with this one, I was like, nah, get in the bin. Oh, oh God. The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. Oh, that man is not for me. That right, oh no, no. And I know I've said this before, but like, if you gave this book a good rating, I wouldn't trust your judgment. Like, it is a joke. Like, I promise I am joking. In the title of this vlog, I am just joking. If you gave any of these books a good rating, 
that's absolutely fine. I'm taking the piss for the title of this video. But with The Maidens, I'm like, I can't see any redeemable quality about it. There are other books in this list that I think, okay, I can see why someone would like that. But with The Maidens, and then oh, I'm not going to spoil what I'm going to say next about an upcoming book, but oh, I can't see why it's good. I genuinely cannot. I even read examples of dialogue out in my Bluetooth Most Hated Thrillers vlog series where the dialogue just didn't connect. It felt like two different characters were having two different conversations and they were trying to be deep. They were trying to have some huge important message to say, but it just ended up becoming so shallow. And like Ruth Wears One by One, it was almost like it was copied and pasted from some kind of motivational speech website. The main character, I cannot remember her name and I never want to remember it again. The only main character's name I ever remember of a book that I painted is fucking Zachary Ezra Rollins, okay? From the Starless Say. Oh, But the main character in The Maiden, she did things that she should not have been allowed to do. And because of her limited connections, it meant that the reveals and things in that book was so obvious, like painfully, painfully obvious, that I'm like, oh, did I just touch my boob there? Sorry, I've just got like, so cold. My tits could probably cut glass right now. It meant that because we had this outsider come into it and she didn't have, oh, you know what? I shouldn't probably say to in depth because that would actually spoil. Oh, uh, you know what? There's part of me that doesn't care if I spoil it. I've said it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not going to say it right. I'm not going to say anything else about the plot of the Maidens, but it's shit, okay? Just take my word for it. It's shit. So the next book that I really didn't like was The Silent Patient by the same man. Ugh. And I feel like maybe I did like The Silent Patient just that tiny little bit more, but there were still so many things, so many plot holes, so many things that shouldn't have happened that happened. And these thrillers, these mysteries are supposed to be as realistic as possible, right? I'm not reading fantasy here. I'm not reading fantasy, but it seems like Alex McLeodies doesn't understand the concept of fantasy in a genuine depiction of real life. Like this could actually happen. And I don't really talk too much about the plots of these books because half the time I've kind of forgotten. But this one, it does follow someone called Alicia. I do remember her name. And she kills her husband. Cause I remember, I really enjoyed the start of it. I was like, oh, this is so intriguing. She killed her husband, no one knows why. And she stopped talking afterwards. So she gets assigned a psychotherapist called Theo and things happen from there. And again, I haven't read that many thrillers. I haven't read that many mysteries, but wow, it was again so obvious from the way that Alex Michaelides presented this story. I was like, there's genuinely no other way that it could have been a different outcome. You know what I mean? Like, the less I say, the better, because again, I don't really want to spoil it for you guys, but uh, just like the main character and the maidens, there were so many things that happened that I thought, this doesn't make sense. There's too many plot holes here. And I know there were some comments on my video reading The Silent Patient, trying to explain certain things, but I still, I don't get it. I still don't get a lot of the things that the main character did, why they did them, why other characters did what they did. There's just times where it just like really did not make sense. Can't go to spoilers. And I think because I did like the opening so much, and it just gradually got worse after that. I got so disappointed and disheartened by the entire thing. And I feel like because it got my hopes up very early on that when it dashed them, I ended up like hating it probably more than I should. I, I can't find anything that redeemable about it. I liked the opening downhill after that. Okay, so the only book that makes this list that I still own the book for is The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. Yeah, I hated this series so much and I'm still keeping the book because I did buy it and it wasn't cheap and it is gorgeous. It is a gorgeous book and I did like The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Spoiler alert, that is the only book in the series that I actually gave a good rating and I think I only gave it three stars. I think I only gave The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe three stars. So this entire series was incredibly disappointing. There were a couple of books in here, I think, the Horse and His Boy and The Last Battle that I gave one in zero stars. There was so much in here that turned out to be incredibly racist, especially in the final book as well. There were a lot of racial stereotypes and I can't redeem this series because of the really outdated morals and things. And I know what you're gonna say, like this was written in the 50s. It still ain't good today. It ain't good today. Honestly, this felt like religious propaganda. And with this being a children's series as well and children are reading this, I'm a little bit icky about giving Giving them this series, I really am. I didn't catch that. Oh, well. Could you try again? No, fuck off. I won't respond to that. And you know what? I would go into a new book in this series as well, thinking, oh, this one's gonna be better than the last one. 
I was wrong. And you know what? Half of these weren't even as whimsical or as magical as I was hoping for. A lot of them turned out to be incredibly dull and I just don't know how this holds anybody's attention who is under the age of 10. And I mean, I'm sure it does. I mean, of course it does because this is one of the most popular children's book series of all time. So of course it does. But I'm just sitting here scratching my head like now I've read the entire series I still don't get it. Did get a good vlog out of it, I will give it that, but that's the only good thing about reading this series. This brought about the birth of Daddy Aslan. If you're thinking about reading the Chronicles of Narnia in this day and age, don't. The next one is The Witches of Eastwick by John Updike, another one where the movie was way better than the book, and I really didn't gel with how the story was presented. I didn't feel like it was the right decision for John Updike to write this story. I feel like that might be a little controversial, but I didn't think he could write women well. There was a lot of like sexualization of them in the most weirdest of ways. And it just made me so uncomfortable to read. The Witches of Eastwick, it does follow three women who live in Eastwick. And this man comes called Daryl Van Horn and he is like tempting these women into using their magic and stuff. And The Witches of Eastwick is probably one of my favorite films. It really is. And I feel like it was only made good. Like the story itself was only made good and the characters were only likable through the portrayals by Cher, Susan Sarandon, Michelle Pfeiffer and Jack Nicholson. They really made the story actually good. It was nice to see some parallels to the movie though. I did think there were some parts of it where I was like, oh, this is like pretty good. You know, I like the way that this is written and, and stuff like that. But then he would just fall apart when it came to the characters and I can't get on board with it when the characters aren't good. Their likability was stripped from them. They were robbed of their personalities as soon as John Updike picked up a pen. And I don't think I will ever read another book by him again. And you know what as well? The Witches of Eastwick is one of my lowest rated according to Goodreads. And I knew that for the past like couple of years since I had this book on my TBR. But I always thought, oh, maybe it's just because it's a little bit older. Maybe it's just the writing style that doesn't gel with people. But no, that isn't the case at all. Sometimes there were moments of brilliance in the writing style. But then I just feel like he shouldn't have wrote this. <laughs> I mean, I am glad he did because we did get that film out of it, but oh, it's so disappointing. The next one is Jaws by Peter Benchley and another example of the movie being way better than the book. Honestly, the movie is iconic and I thought the book would at least live up to some of it. And you know what? I think when I started the book too, I felt, oh, this is like so suspenseful. And like, I love the way that this is written and the point of view of this shark. And I could see exactly what the movie took inspiration from. And I was like, this is a great source material for it. But then it unraveled about a quarter to halfway through the book when we had this really stupid storyline of the main character's wife having an affair with one of the other main characters. And it just detracted from the story. I was like, what is the actual point of this? And it was going on for far too long. It was dragged out. It really distracted from the actual story of this shark and its victims. And there were some great messages of like what our morals are. Like, do we put people first or do we put the economy first? Like things like that. And the sort of really hard topic of this town, this really small seaside town being dependent on their tourism and what it will do to them if something like these shark attacks become worldwide news. So like, it was really interesting to look at that, but then the whole affair thing was just far too distracting and it really dragged the book so far down for me. And then I just don't feel like it had that great of a conclusion. It just seemed to end and I was left feeling so disappointed. The movie is ingrained in my mind because it scarred me as a child. The book <laughs> kind of ruins it a little bit, not gonna lie. But we had something that could have been so fantastic and it just wasn't. The last two books I'm gonna mention are just like two really poor mangas that I thought were really creepy and they, oh, they were absolutely just disgusting and they are wild wild wildlife and gaze anatomy. Both of them had material in it that I don't think is appropriate and really disgusting and vile. Please 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 avoid them. I, I know I kind of joke about some books earlier like oh, avoid it and stuff but like honestly read what you want. But these books I would say it deals with things that should not have been written and it will make you uncomfortable in the worst possible way. I can't even talk too much about them because they were just awful manga that I just kind of skipped through because I just couldn't believe that it was actually published. Both of them, yeah, please don't read them. Like, please, I beg. Avoid them with everything you have. And that's pretty much it. Like, seriously, I feel weird because usually there's a lot more to say about my worst books. In the past couple of years where I've done the worst books of 2020 and 2021 and things like that, I usually have had way more to say but this year I don't think I do. I, I don't really have a lot of hatred for a lot of books. I mean, there are things from like the Pretty Little Lies series, the Goosebumps series, the Animorph series that I would have included in this, but at the same time, I'm like, 
Those are kind of a given. They're like really long running kind of series and they just have like really bad books in them. But I just don't feel like they're worth mentioning because well, for one, a lot of them just blend into one. So I can't remember which one was my least favorite of those series. And two, I feel like all of them have made at least one book on my best books of the year list. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And I do think I read way more good things than I did bad things this year, which is always a plus. But yeah, I'm sorry. I don't feel like I had a lot of hot takes in there. So I don't think I ranted all that much. I just don't have the energy for it. These books don't deserve my energy. And I'm not going to give it to them. I'm not going to give it what I want. So that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave all the comments down below. Do you agree with anything I said? Do you disagree? Let's have a chat about it. What are some of your worst books of the year? I would also love to know that. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons for support my channel. If you'd like to join my Patreon or follow me on any social media, then all the links are down in the description box. If you fancy going to Japan with me, there is also a link down in the description box for that too, if you want to check it out. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye.